Well, it is good to be with you guys tonight. Welcome to those who are watching online. If you are joining us, I want to say welcome. And uh, for those of you here tonight, thank you for being here so that uh, I'm not just preaching to myself because I will tell you that in preparing this sermon for tonight, I very much felt like it was 100% for me. I love Sunday night services, and I know that I'm probably preaching to the choir, but I love Sunday night services because Sunday night services is where you get more. You get more of God. You get more of the Word. You get more of worship. You get more time to pray. You get more family time if you bring your family and you get to be with them. It's just more on Sunday nights, and as long as I have a say in it and I have breath in my lungs, I will fight to continue to have Sunday nights, even if it ends up just being me and my family here, it's valuable and it, it's worth it and I'm glad that you're here and I know that God wants to bless you for that. Turn in your Bibles to Numbers chapter six and we're gonna read a couple verses from there in just a little bit. We're starting a new three-week series titled, Don't Be a Grinch. Now turn to your neighbor and say, don't be a Grinch, right? Now, if you aren't sitting by a neighbor, yell across the section and say, hey, you, don't be a Grinch, right? This is a series about generosity. Now, I think whenever we talk about generosity, it's very easy to jump straight to finances. It's easy to jump straight to serving and giving, and that's not what I'm going to be talking about. To you about, although uh, we will be hearing a little bit about that in, in the next couple of weeks. You know, we live in such a me centered culture where every dollar that we earn, the first thing that we think is, how can this benefit my life? How can this benefit my family? How can I spend this money? And, and, and so it's a very important thing to talk about generosity. But tonight, I'm talking about generosity in a way that maybe you haven't. Um, thought about recently, and that's being generous with your attention. And the beautiful thing about attention is that we all possess it, and we are capable of giving attention. Now, I stand here tonight and tell you that I need to be in the pew tonight, and preparing this message, this was like a punch right between the eyes for me in, in just realizing that I am not great at giving attention. I'm, I'm a little ADD. I don't know where I get that. Maybe you have an idea where I get that from, but I don't know where I get that from. Um, and and uh, it very well could be me sitting in this pew, and it probably should be Pastor Brian or Pastor Jeff up here talking about this, because they're two of the best pastors about giving you their ear, about giving you their attention. Now, I uh, struggle with giving attention to the things that matter most, and I, I believe that many people struggle with this. Most people live a distracted life. I did some research, and I found some varying opinions, but kind of the average median um, that I could find says that people spend an average of 3.4 hours a day on their cell phones. Now, some of you guys, like I just saw someone go, are you kidding me? Three and a half hours on your phone? Like, I don't even use it. But you've got to realize this. My generation has replaced TVs with TV on their phone. My generation has replaced desktop computers with Instagram and Facebook on their phone. And, and, and we give so much attention to just a little computer that is pretty fascinating in a lot of ways. And, and, and ask my wife, like, I don't need a cell phone to be distracted. Like, I can be the only one in the kitchen, and she starts talking, and about halfway into what she's saying, I start realizing, oh no, she's been saying something to me, and I've got no idea what she's, how many know what I'm saying? Ladies, easy with the elbows tonight, okay? It's just a male genetic in many ways. And I don't need extra distractions in my life to live a distracted life, but I believe that giving attention is one of the most powerful things that you can do in your life, not just to God, but to the people that we love most. I feel very challenged in this, and I hope that you will allow the Holy Spirit to challenge you. And tonight, I'm I'm gonna be asking us all to evaluate what's getting your attention and to make a plan to reprioritize the things that deserve our attention, and then to ask the Holy Spirit to enable us so that we can execute that plan. Numbers chapter 6, but before we read, I want to pray. 
God, I thank you for those who showed up tonight, and I thank you for those watching online or at a later time. I pray right now, God, that we would give this word, your word, your holy word, the attention that it deserves, and that your spirit would awaken our minds and our hearts, God, and that we would pay attention to what you have for us, God, and, and that we would have a confidence that you are going to see us in whatever way that you're leading us that we'll be able to accomplish that. So God, speak through me tonight. Continue to challenge me tonight. And I just pray a, a blessing on tonight's sermon and response. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. So you can follow along with me on the screens or if you've got your Bibles. We're going to be reading um, a very famous uh, passage uh, Numbers chapter 6, verse 22 through 26 said this, The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Now many of you are familiar with the song, The Blessing. How many have heard that it came out this year? How many like were singing that song as I was reading this? The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Right? Beautiful song straight from scripture. And I believe that it is a message for us tonight to hear that God has his attention focused on you, and that there is a blessing that follows attention. Okay, the key verses that I really want to focus on tonight is verses 25 and 26, where it says, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Now, what does that mean? Make his face shine upon you. That's a weird statement. If I went home tonight and I said, hey, baby, hey, Elizabeth, I'm going to make my face shine upon you tonight, you know, that would be weird. For some of you, it'd be really weird. In my, my house, it'd be mildly weird, okay? That's not that weird. But that's a weird statement to say, like, I'm going to shine my face upon you. I'm going to turn my face upon you. But what this blessing means is that when God's face shines upon you, it means that you have his full attention. He is looking at you. He is the loving father that is aware of all of your needs. He sees when that you are struggling. He celebrates in your victories. He hears every prayer and petition that you lift to him because his face has turned towards you. There's a genuine connection that takes place when God turns his face towards you and lets his face shine upon you. When was the last time you felt the warmth of God's face? When was the last time that you stood aware that he was thinking of you? I'm amazed by that, that he would even do that. Moses knew this better than anyone, the author of this book. He knew that there was a blessing from God that follows the attention from God. Moses would encounter God in such a way that when he would go and encounter God, what would happen to his face when he left the tent? His entire countenance would change. He, his face would glow, and he would hide it by a veil, right? He knew that there was a blessing that would follow him. And having God's attention, hear me tonight, having God's attention is one of the greatest gifts that he gives us. And in the same way, giving someone our full attention is one of the greatest gifts that we can give others. Elizabeth is so, so gracious with me because I'm a really bad listener. I really am. And she can be talking to me, and I can say that I'm listening, but I'm really struggling to fully engage and listen to what she's saying because there's a TV on in the restaurant in the corner, and I don't get to watch sports, you know? I, 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 don't, I get to catching up on my sports scores or whatever else it is. Or, or I've got my phone, and someone is texting, and, and work is knocking at the door, and it's not until I physically turn my face towards her, and I lock eyes with her, and I say, Elizabeth, you have my full attention right now. Like, I am 100% engaged with you. I am connected with you. I'm right here. That's the only time that she knows that she has my full attention. Guys, how many understand the struggle is real, right? Now, what does that do for her? 
It gives her confidence that I care about what she's talking about. It gives her confidence in my love for her. It makes her feel secure in my, that my attention is on her. And it makes her know that she doesn't have to fight for my attention. And it makes her feel valued. And ultimately, it blesses her. I was so saddened to hear about Carl Lentz, who was a, a pastor at Hillsong, New York. And he stepped outside of his, his uh, marriage vows and, and and he cheated, and now he's no longer a pastor, and he's working to restore the trust of his wife for over 18 years, and he's got three children. And, and, and I was just thinking, how did that happen? How does something like this happen? And I believe that most affairs happen when attention gets placed in the wrong way. All of a sudden, a cute person comes along, and they take interest in you. They turn their face towards you, and now they are fully engaged with you, and they're listening to you. They're, they're listening to your problems. They, they care about what you're going through. And there's this attention that starts to happen. And that attention causes a connection. And, and then all of a sudden, there's this emotional response when there's attention involved. How many understand what I'm saying? Some of you ladies are like, guys, listen to Pastor Austin right now because you give me some attention. I'll give you some attention later right? Like, you, you turn your face towards me, and, and we'll just see where that goes. Like, there's something that happens in attention that there's a genuine connection, and it's a powerful gift when you give it to someone else. Is it possible that we are living in an age where we have become more connected than ever, yet we are living completely disconnected? What do I mean by that? Why does scrolling through social media that was caused and created to help people connect leave people, leaving for, leave people feeling more disconnected? Why is it that, that when we connect through a like or a heart or a care emoji or we comment, why does that not feel nearly as significant as sitting down, having coffee, face-to-face, -face, no distractions, I'm with you, you're with me, there's nothing else in the room that matters at this point? I think we have learned a very bad habit in this quarantine season where we feel this false sense of security that we are connecting with people when we are not connecting with people at all. We are not truly giving them attention because right below their post is an ad. Right above their post is another post. And you, you've given their attention for maybe three seconds, but you're not fully engaged in that attention. As we step out of this season and, and, and we step back into uh, maybe whatever normal looks like in the future, let's fight to be people that are present Let's fight to be people that look each other in the eyes, that connect, that we, we give each other our attention. I want to challenge you tonight in two ways. I know that I'm preaching to the choir in many ways, but the first is to be generous with your attention to those that you love most. I'm guilty at times of, of my kids saying, Dad, Daddy, 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 and I'm like, whoa, 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 you know, or it's not until Elizabeth says, Austin, do you hear them? Like, why is that? That's, that's horrible of me. These are my children. These are my offspring. Th th these, are, these are me, right? I, I need to get better at that. Some of you have parents or grandparents that are nearing the end of their life, and they might be in a nursing home, or they might be in another state. Are you giving them the attention that they deserve? That's a hard, hard thing. Some of you guys got friends, have you just forgotten about them and gotten so consumed with Facebook or whatever else that is consuming your life that you're completely not giving them attention? I was talking with my best friend this week on the phone, and, and he's like, you know what? We were down here, and I was with my dad, and, and my, his grandparents are like 92, 93, and 89 or 90, right in there. The one is not doing well. And he turned to his dad, and he said this. He said, you know, whatever we have to do and whatever we have accomplished today and this weekend, it can wait because there's going to be a day soon where we're just longing to go over here and sit in their living room and just talk for a couple hours. We're going to be longing for a day just to be able to spend another meal with them. Just have one more conversation, one more cup of coffee. And I thought, what a powerful example. And, and I challenge you, is there people in your life 
that you love, that you need to start giving attention. Maybe God is dropping names in your heart that you're like, man, someone needs my attention, and, and they might be difficult. You know, I understand that. Like, there's some people that need my attention where I'm like, I don't even want to give you my attention because you're draining. I'm just being real. Anybody else a real human being in the room, right? But God might drop someone in your heart because God knows that that person needs you. What attention do you need to give to someone in your life? We need to learn to be human again. Are you being a Grinch in your attention that you give to those that you love most? What's distracting you from being present with your family or friends? For me, it was Instagram. I completely deleted my Instagram. You can deactivate your account for a little while, and it's like, are you, are you sure that you want to go? We'll deactivate it. That way, in case you want to come back, you can do it, and you can just take a temporary break. No, I like straight up deleted it, because I realized the fruit that was happening in my life, whether I was learning about something or seeing about someone's life, was not even close to the impact that it was having in my attention and my ability to give others my attention. I ask you guys tonight, what is it that God might asking you to give up or rearrange so that you can bless others with your attention? What is it? What's distracting you? What's holding you back? Giving your attention to others will bless them immensely. Your marriage will be enriched. Your kids will have security. Has it ever crossed your mind that maybe your kids are acting out not because they're bad kids, but because they know that when you disobey, it will cause you to turn your attention towards them. Your friends will know that you love them, and it will build deeper friendships. You cannot expect to have a deep friendship unless you are willing to go deep with your attention and your interest with them. Let's do a better Let's do better by allowing God to speak to us tonight in what ways need to change. And the second challenge I have is this, is to be generous with your attention to God. Now, I shouldn't even really have to, you know, talk about this tonight, but God deserves our attention. And even if he never turned his face towards us, even if he never shined his face upon us ever again the rest of our life, even if you never once for the rest of your life felt the presence of God, got the Holy Spirit goosebumps, he would still be worthy of our attention. Do you only give God attention when you need something? Do you only give God attention when you feel him and when you experience him? Or do you give him attention because he deserves it? Why does he deserve it? Because he left his place to come to our place, to take our place on the cross, and he's returned to his place to prepare us a place so that someday we can join him in his place. He has saved us while we were enemies with Christ. He came down. And he sent his sinless son to die on the cross so that we can be with him. That is enough for me to give my attention back to Christ. And in a little bit, I'm going to give us the opportunity to really pour out our praise, to really pour out our attention on God tonight. What is distracting you from giving God your undivided attention? Maybe it's a person. Maybe it's a situation. Maybe it's worry and stress. Maybe it's Fox News. Maybe it's, it's whatever it might be in your life. What is preventing you from giving God your full undivided attention? Because when you give God your full undivided attention, what that is is it's a form of worship. And when you worship him with your attention, guess what? When he says go, you go. When he says jump, you say how high. When, when he, he instructs you and he leads you, you are there because you have turned your face back towards him and we're able to fulfill the good deeds that he's prepared in advance for us to do. When was the last time, answer this in your own heart, and, and really answer this. Don't let these, this question roll off your ears. When was the last time that you sincerely took a good chunk of time to turn your attention to God? I'm not trying to shame anybody here, but I feel very challenged, and you'll see me sometimes leave. You know, I've got college service right after this, and you'll see me leave, and, and I've got to go do college service. But I watch a handful of students 
go deep, and they'll sit in the presence of God for 30, 40, 50 minutes. Sometimes it's been 11 o'clock when I've left the church because they just want to be with God. They give their attention to God. That doesn't happen every week. I wish it did. It'd be awesome. There's some weeks in my flesh where I'm so tired because I've been up since five o'clock and I've done this and I've done that and I get over there and all I can help to do is think, God, please let worship not go long tonight because I want to get to bed. In my flesh, usually those are the nights that we go long and God just pours out his blessing on the group. When was the last time that you really set aside a chunk of time to pour your attention on Christ? I can't help but think of how amazing it is that God even thinks of us. It's like that song we used to sing. Um, I find it a little bit repetitive. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend, right? Some of you guys are like, that's my favorite song. Sorry, it's one of my least favorite. But the verse, who am I that you are mindful of me, that you hear me when I call? God sees you, and you have God's attention. Does God have yours? We're going to end with the opportunity to listen to God's voice. What is he speaking to you? What needs to change? What needs to be canceled from your life? What needs rearranged? And we're going to take the next three or four minutes just after I pray and allow God to speak to us. And then we're going to spend a time in prayer. And I'm going to guide us in a little bit in an exercise. And then um, we'll go. So let me just pray. And I just encourage you as I pray, don't, don't be complacent or don't just sit. Agree with me right now. Jesus, I just pray tonight that you would help us identify the things in our life that are robbing us of giving one of the greatest gifts that we can give of our attention. I pray, God, that marriages would be strengthened because we truly listen, we truly look at each other. God, I pray that, that children would feel secure in, in their love from their parents and their grandparents because they have their undivided attention. And most importantly, God, help us by your spirit, give you the attention that you deserve, Lord. So tonight, we give you room to move, to speak. And I pray, God, that every ounce of tiredness, every ounce of glassy-eyed, I'm just ready for bed, we just set that aside. We have come here with a purpose, and that's to hear from you, to give you our attention. And so we are listening, and help us that, to do so. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's take the next three or four minutes and we're just going to listen. Jesus, we repent of living a busy life. God, we repent of, of not prioritizing you when you've given us everything. Now, we are sorry, Lord, for what we've made it. God, we're sorry for missed opportunities of gathering in your presence, yet allowing our minds to be disengaged. God, I pray by your spirit right now that your holiness would just begin to fall in this place, that we would turn our eyes to you, God, that you would begin to speak things to people's hearts, God, speak things to certain situations, Lord. If someone is viewing something wrong, Lord, right now, I pray that you would open up eyes, that there would be reconciliation of heart, Jesus. We give you the attention that you deserve, God. Whatever you want to do and however you want to move, we give you room. We create space for you, for you are a big God. I expect big things from tonight, Lord. In my life, Jesus, continue to speak to me and challenge me, God. May I not be someone who lives just doing things, but I would be in your presence, God, that I would be in, in your will and that I would be walking in the river that flows from the throne room of heaven, God, that I would be anointed in your spirit, Jesus, because I give you my attention, Lord, and I pray that, that you would turn your face upon us, that we would recognize it, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us, Jesus. want to lead us in an exercise here that uh, might be a little bit different, but uh, I recently saw um, a post that talked about the gifts of the Spirit. 
and uh, it said something along the lines of, I would rather have a church who exercises the gifts of the Spirit with some abuses that can be corrected than a church that exer doesn't exercise it at all. And someone commented and said, um, uh, I heard it once say it's easier to turn a moving ship than it is a ship that's just sitting still, right? And so this is an exercise that we do in the college group probably once a month. But we're going to take another two minutes and we're going to ask God to speak to us something. And I trust you guys. When God speaks something to you, if you feel like you need to share it with the group, it will fall under what God has ordained in scripture as what's appropriate. And that is to be encouragement to the body. This is not like a confessional time. This is not a time where you would come up and blast somebody or you would have a, a, an agenda of any kind. When God speaks through people in words of prophecy and, and different times of, of just a word of knowledge, it's to edify and build up the church. How many are with me tonight? So we're gonna take the next two minutes and I'm gonna ask you to pray this with me and clear your mind. And we're gonna see what God does. We've had times where people have heard random names in our college group and it means nothing to them and they'll say, I feel like Laura is a name that just came to mind. Does anybody have anything that happened to Laura? It says, I've got a coworker who's Laura and her mom is having cancer or whatever it is. And, and there's just these dots that begin to move by the Holy Spirit of God. And so be open to whatever. It might be weird. It might be a word picture. It might be just an image. I've seen colors before that were meaningful. And so we're just gonna allow God to be God just for a minute. Are you guys okay with that? Okay, you guys posture yourself in a way that you get ready however that looks for you. But Jesus, right now, we agree and we ask, God, that you would clear our minds of everything except what you want to speak to us, Lord. We are your servants and we are listening, God. Open up ears, open up hearts, open up eyes, God. Let us see visions, let us hear names, let us, let us hear from you tonight, God. And I pray that your voice would speak through your people and the Holy Spirit gifts that were gifted to us by your Holy Spirit would begin to flow in this congregation tonight. And so God, we clear our minds and we give you reign and control for the next two minutes, Lord. Speak to us for your servants are listening.